too long. Come on, talk to you. I don't know. I've seen good backs on you. I'm getting pushed. I plug in the to the Bible. The United States of America. The truth of my life, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Kristen Patch, 442.26. Christine Belandra, 647.71. First one was wrong. 446. Yes. I think it's a 46. 442.26. Okay, Christine. Yep, 647. Ian Matheson, 76.29. Mark Turner, 485.94. Matthew Berger on 252.74. Keith Culligan, 1026.41. Erica Kenyon, 121.53. William Kenyon, 221.45. Vanessa Lejeune, 175.40. Tim Lindemann, 492.22. Joyce Kegel, 335.73. 42.87 and 68 cents. This is it, right? No. <laughs> Next week's an election. <clears throat> Next week you get to read everything. It's an election, that's it. You know, that's where you get to read. Ready? Yeah. George Abel, 104787. Eleanor Cherry, 94439. Jared Alsenalt, 73575. Andrew Bickham, 56087. Joe Bird, 80301. Mark Brightman, 1341.84. Gloria Benz. Benz. Wendia. Wendia, 539.05. Karen Clement, 994.41. Alyssa Sanuski, 370.21. Michael Dame, 795.97. Dwayne Demerit, 702.33. Kiki Donis Wall, 92.12. Tracy Flinders, 384.69. Ken Gothier, 728.86. Warren Graham, 139.28. Jason Grant, 470.01. Andrew Gray, 540.66. John Isabel, 911.10. Kip Kaiser, 756.19. Michael Kilrain, 581.87. Peter King, 162.08. Albert Kazaka, 842.67. Julie Labonte, 105.36. Stephanie Lizak Perdo, 367.02. Tom Leach, 299.67. Heather Lindsay, 575.42. Elise McNaughton, 46.50. Joyce Miller, Boyd. Erin Mitchell, 93.52. Rachel Marbury, 44.32. Wayne Robinson, 793.75. David Roy, 828.69. Brenda Silver, 82.84. Jeremy Smith, 580.01. Katrina Tennant, 396.40. Donald Tilby, 287.79. Josh Turner, 150.71. <coughs> Donna Vatavanko, 740.53. Olivia Wall, 4432. Daniel Wicks, 943.83. J. 
Janice Weir is 701 cent. Jeremy Worcester, 657.83. Daphne Wass, 556.28. For a total of $27,740. $27,27,21. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. Does anybody want <coughs> I have to get my favorite. Yeah. Alpha Graphics 245368. So this is Bag 52188. Comcast 19356. Episode is 25510. Glenn Greenwood 55320. Hotman Oil 862.61. Health Trust $50. No, $12.50. $12.50. Julia Labonte, $35.56. LCB Transport, $95. James Michu, $2,000. Fort and Salt, $62.31.63. Edward Roski, 1024 Talmac Inductees, $59.22. Cool Corporation, $126.36. Ramon Networks, $43.66. SEO 16 Treasurer, $185,000. Where were we? Okay. I see you 16, 185,000. <coughs> Saki Weldon, four, 447.50 cents. Suburban Propane, 314.34. Unifirst Corporation, 40 and 89 cents. Valet, 219.10. Waste Management, 29.95.32. WB Mason, 6525. Grand total of two hundred eighteen thousand seven hundred and four dollars and seventy eight cents. We have four rent checks. So we put in 65,000 big payroll in the fire department, school payment. I had to move 150,000 at least to 3 million, 775, 362, Last question on the market too. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. Well, hold on. Did anybody talk to you about um, possibly going to a bi-weekly? We talked about that. Bi-weekly? Did you talk to John about it? Don't worry about it today. That's on the horizon. It was a suggestion on the second degree. If I apply one place to that, yeah. It's never come up before. <laughs> As he runs up. Well, thanks. <laughs> 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 he took off like a. <laughs> Guess he doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> no, I can still reach it. You can? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's harder. Uh, I, I, got, I got protection. Good evening. Good evening. First up, we have 110, 10 o'clock at noon. Anthony um, Eleanor, and this one is an electrical for a remodel. Next we have 40 Spruce Ridge. This is Mike Ford and this is 
for a remodel of a basement with no sleeping rooms. For the Spruce Ridge Drive again, and Mike Ploid, and this is an electrical permit for that renovation. Three thirty nine Little Road. This is for Bob and Holly Gilbert, and this is an electrical permit for a solar array. Three thirty nine Little Road again. Again, Gilbert, and this is for the array itself. Three thirteen to one twenty five. And this is for um, Justin Bolsomer, and this one is for a sign. It's going to be on the existing signpost and one on the building. three foundations, one's a duplex, the other end, and number eight will be coming up, which will be the fourth. Um, are they all singles or are they all duplexes? They're all singles except for one. Okay. So, so yes, they're moving along. And uh, in other business, we did a uh, pretty big meeting today, so I and so I've got a few contractors and giving prices on the porch at the Grange. And uh, that's pretty much it. Have they moved that house on Scrabble Road yet? They did some cleanup around it. And I'll be down there tomorrow to see exactly where we're at. The uh, state had to sign off on the um, remediation for it on. But it is at least at that point. It's moving. How does it feel? You take it. Thanks. Thanks. Do you have a copy of your record? No, I have a copy of I'm going to call up. Call up Mary Clancy.
Well, he helps. He well, well, splits the duty. Well, right. I think this is all for you. It looks like you got a whole package there. This is me. Looks like it's me and yeah, that's and, yours. I, and I and I picked up one of the library oh, wow. so not a good tool. Start selling those. That one is got the nice uh, binding. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Nice. It does. <laughs> um, just just to explain to the rest of you why I'm here and what I'm doing. Uh, each year, once the warrant articles are published, uh, I ask for a meeting with the select board uh, so that I can go through them with them and ask the kinds of questions that might be the kind of questions that would be asked from the audience at the town meetings. Uh, and uh, it's a very open kind of process, uh, very, very public, uh, and some of my questions are really dumb uh, because I don't know the answers. Uh, so, so I typed them up this afternoon. And the warrant with the notes is inside of the town report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I don't, we, we have uh, 20, 25 or 26 or 27 warrant articles, and I certainly don't have questions about all of them. Uh, but I do about nine of them. Uh, and the first one uh, is the general municipal operations. Uh, and I've got three questions. Are there, are there, any, are there any specific quote, hot items that may come up uh, that are related uh, to the total town budget. Is there anything that uh, we should be aware of and uh, be ready to be responsive to? I think the budget committee and the select board are on the same page on the budget, so. It looked like that. I think it's gonna be, I mean, unfortunately we had a pretty, pretty substantial increase in the health increase, in health insurance, that was 10 and a half percent. Overall, the, the budget, I think we came in pretty good at 3.95 percent. Well, and, and that was the second of the questions. Of, of the $153,000 increase for this year, is there is there anything within that that's particularly new? I, I, I saw in the newsletter the description of what it was, uh, but uh, is there anything else within that that's new, or is it just the kind of things that naturally increase each year? Um, we have some wage adjustments that we've done for the police mm -hmm. department um, and some other departments like the town clerk's office, the building inspector, code enforcement. So there's been some wage um, adjustments that we've done in those. But other than that, I mean, a sizable increase was uh, felt with the budget process just on the health insurance. That was a huge impact, mm -hmm. ten and a half percent across the board for everyone. So. Could could you remind me again what the board's policy is by law on uh, any changes that can be made by the public uh, to that budget? I, I know that you can't go above ten percent. You can go down as low as people amend it and want it. But beyond that, in terms of individual departments and individual amounts and so forth, what what is what is your thought about any changes? Well, I think if the, I, I think last year, unfortunately, I think there was a, a request to add it to for a wage adjustment, mm -hmm. which was done on the floor. And I think, and, and, I, and I don't know if the rest of the board would agree with me, I assume they would. Um, I think that's unfortunate because you don't really, they might not be purview to all the performance process evaluations and um, stuff that goes into the factoring of salary increases mm -hmm. and adjustments. So I think if that were to come up this year, I think there'd be some different discussions and we'd be a little bit more prepared for how we would respond to that. I think it's dangerous sometimes to make the wage adjustments from the floor. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it would go, well, we can put it into the budget. If somebody wanted to increase it, they could put it into the budget. But we would still have to go back as a board on uh, performance evaluations and reviews uh, specific employees or individuals if it's trying to be targeted for one individual. I think it's a dangerous precedent to do it from the floor, which I think was brought up last year also. Mm -hmm. Okay. But legally, it's legal. Yeah. Legally, they can say we want to 
put something in there. Is it 10% down to or is it 10% up? 10% up. up. So you can't go more than 10% up right. from what the budget committee recommends because they're municipal. But I think, yeah, it can go down to zero dollars, I guess, right? Yep. So how would you run? I don't know how that would work. But if the amendment is made to increase the budget, that only goes to the bottom line operating budget. And then it would be up to the board if they want to allocate those funds anywhere. What about amendments related to any particular department? They can make the, the intent um, on the town meeting for, but that doesn't mean that's not binding. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, second one would be Article 2, which has to do with the uh, uh, the Martin property. Um, could you just describe for me, uh, or for all of us perhaps, uh, an explanation of non-lapsing five years? I, I think I know what that means, but I want to be sure about that. I wish Jeff was here. Uh, number two. Explain that. Has to do with $150,000 uh, from the Conservation Commission related to uh, yeah, I think they have to their they money. Because there's grants and stuff that they're doing <coughs> right. through the Southeast Land Trust. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there was more money. It's going to cost more than $150,000 to do this. I think, yeah. So they still have to get those grant dollars. So that's, that's why the, it's basically an extension. Is that it? Yeah. Over a number of years? $150,000, but then they have so much time to secure their grants to process it. You know, I, I would just, uh, a, a positive comment about the Southeast Land Trust. Uh, at, at, at Pilgrim Church, we were approached by the Federal Department of Agriculture to uh, put our 85 acres into a conservation easement. Uh, and the first year that we wrote the proposal, we almost got it. The second year that we wrote the proposal, we almost got it. The third year, the reason that we got it and ended up with $410,000 was because of Southeast Land Trust, uh, who came in and approached the abutters on either side of us, and suddenly the 85 acres was 300, with Dudley Brook in the middle, and a, and a water area that went to the ocean, and they jumped for it. It was, it was great. Well, on this, this property, it abuts other conservation bills, yeah, probably weren't by there with it. It abuts um, our already existing. Oh. Wow. Quick question oh. on this. Taxpayer money going to buy this, who's going to hold the easement? Southeast Land Trust or the town? I believe the town. Town? Okay. I believe the town. I believe yeah, the Southeast Land Trust, Trust, I believe, would just manage the trust, right. kind of like what they do with some of the other stuff. Right. They perform periodical audits. Right. Audits also. Right. So this particular property abuts already existing town owned land. Mm -hmm including nature trails and so on. And this will just add to the already existing town and property because okay. contiguous to what's already there. It's a huge swap of um, wildlife area. Okay. Um, I have a question. The, you said the land hope, the town owning it. Are you sure that the National Resource Board doesn't own the easement? I'm pretty sure Jeff said that the town would own this in, so in, in conjunction with the rest of the land that's over there also owned by the town. So I, think I would. I mean, I would definitely defer to Jeff because it's a conservation um, commission. They're the ones that sought, sought out the. Because uh, uh, I, I believe in that. Uh, that when I read, maybe I read it wrong. Goodness knows. Um, the National Resource Board was finance was was the money that South the South Land Trust was getting the money from, but and they were buying like the easement, and then the easement would be. I don't know what they do then. I mean, you know. Yeah, and, and, and I know um, all Jeff will be there at the meeting, and he'll be the one speaking to this warrant. Yeah. Okay. The next, um, the next is the article that deals with the uh, uh, the solar array uh, at the firehouse. Um, and, and my only question there is, uh, is, is that? Uh, is that now pretty generally accepted by the town? Do you hear any flack about it? I bugs? think so. I think, you know, um, it makes sense to put the $17,000 mm -hmm. so that way we can buy this out. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can reap the benefits from all the energy. I, I know a couple of years ago when uh, it was 
presented and voted on that, that Malcolm Allison did a great job of responding to questions from the audience. And then I heard him the next day on WMUR doing, doing the same thing. Uh, and so, so it looks pretty permanent there. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm not planning on moving. All right. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, it was mentioned last week here at the selectmen's meeting of uh, moving the solar array to a different location in town. No. The solar array discussion that there, there's talk of having them plan for the police department building to be up where the towers that they're putting in the back, yeah. it wouldn't affect the solar array. We're not moving the solar array. At okay. least that's not the plan from Norwich University or Keene State that are doing the um, capstone project for us. Um, they're looking at how much land we have. So like uh, when you go into the fire station, they have that big hill in the back and then they put that new tower up in the back. We might have to move the tower that they just got done building. <laughs> Um, if that's the spot that they feel would be um, the best option for us to put that. Um, I know they were looking at some property on Scrabble Road. Um, and across the street from the solar array. Yeah, across the street. They were going to look at that. Uh, there's another location to it might be on South Road. There's, there's several different locations. Like they looked at another place that was down the street further towards Fremont. Um, middle too, but I think that was 400 yards back into the woods, so I think that would work, but it depends on what they come through. But the solar panels, they wouldn't be moving them. Um, there was two choices on that fire department lot, and it was one to add on to the existing building or to build up where that um, <coughs> second layer, basically. That's the option right now. I, the solar array, I don't see them moving it just because when they did that site and they mapped it out, they mapped it out based on efficiency of where we would get the most sun and least amount of uh, trees and everything else around them. So. Okay, thank you. Um, Article uh, 7, maintenance for town buildings. Uh, is that money for routine kinds of stuff or is that for uh, one or more very specific kinds of things that need to be done? I think it's very similar to like what we had with, um, like we had to put the roof on this building, it was $84,000. Mm -hmm. um, so it's purposes for like large repairs that come up that we have to do, uh, whether you're siding, whether you're replacing a roof. Good. Um, painting. Painting, you know. The library is how much? Sixteen thousand. Sixteen thousand dollars to paint the library building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I think. Grange Hall. Yeah. So the Grange Hall, new doors, town office, uh, PD to increase safety, and okay. ADA compliance. Okay. Like good. Good. Uh, a similar question related to the bridges. Uh, is that money? Generally, for bridge repair, or are there specific bridges that that's targeted for? Um, I think it's like Mill Road, for example, that bridge over there, it's been on the red list for I don't know, how many years now? Two years? Um, mm -hmm. It cost us a million dollars to reconstruct Crawley Falls. So yeah. we have to have at least some type of a capital reserve. If we can get funding from the state for the bridge, or there's federal bridge aid, then we'll apply for it. But you need to have, and we have, you know, culverts and bridges that wash out all the time that we have to use that money for. Was that million for Crowley Falls, 80 percent state? Um, was it? Yeah. yeah. It still costs us a million. Yeah. Sure. It's an expensive bridge. Sure. Bridges are expensive, and um, I know if we have to do the one over by the Mills Falls. Okay. With the dam right there and everything, I yeah. don't even know how much that costs. Oh. I can't even venture to guess. Uh, okay. Mary's going to be out there with a pickaxe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Skip's going to help. Article 13, the police station. Uh, and uh, the, the, the article has to do with setting aside for the beginning of probably many hundreds of thousands uh, each year. Uh, what what are the alternative? I mean, one of the alternatives, obviously, 
uh, is down the road at some point, two to three million bucks for a bond issue. Um, yeah. It would seem to me that that will probably a big, be a big topic of discussion. Uh, are there other alternatives? Well, this is basically the start of putting aside funding for a new police station uh, to, to help saving, the savings account to basically start putting the money aside. We recognize the fact that the town is continuing to grow. We recognize that, you know, we're doing this huge project over here on where Three Ponds was. So the town is continuing to expand. Um, unfortunately, the way the police department is at this point, it doesn't appear as if it's working um, or that uh, it's a viable location at this point. So we're looking at other alternatives, reaching out to Keene State, reaching out to Norwich University that are doing these capstone projects to see, you know, what we need to do in order to comply with certain things. So when they do have um, a drug bust they had last week, year and they bring all that marijuana into the building that we don't have the town clerk's office dealing with that aroma coming up. So like last year we had put in a ventilation system. Um, they had to put all the stuff into a cell because it has to dry before they get rid of it. Those are things that we need to plan for, the evidence rooms, the, the locker rooms. As you get um, a more diverse uh, department, in the larger department, we have to start planning for the locker rooms and all the other stuff that goes along with that. And right now we have one locker room that the men and women share. Um, we really probably should have independent <coughs> locker rooms. I, and I've talked with the chief about, about a number of these things. Um, but if, if we end up if we end up with doing something like 100000 a year, mm -hmm. uh, that will be forever. Uh, to come up with two or three million dollars to actually build one. I'm, I'm wondering if there's anything in between as an alternative. Well, there will be, uh, eventually, it'll be kind of like what we did with the fire department. Mm -hmm. You would eventually take out a bond. The more yeah. you save, if we put $100,000 aside this year, 100000 next year, let's say we're five years up from a police station. Yeah. Well, now I have a half a million dollars. If it costs me $2 million to do it, I might have to bond $1.5 million because I already have a half a million. And that's the purpose of the capital reserve accounts. Okay. They could make an option at the town meeting to say, we don't want to put in money for this, and when it comes time, we want to bond it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the option. Um, I can see where that I think we've might come up. Is, and it, it could come up, but as a, as a town, I think we've gotten into, um, Brentwood's pretty uh, good about creating these capital reserve accounts for planning ahead so that way we don't have to have that huge financial impact all at once. We basically slowly, um, we have the impact, we have the impact, and then all of a sudden, then we can do it. And then that way you're not getting that massive impact. I, I remember when Ike Cross helped us get started <laughs> that, that particular way. Yeah. Bob, you, question on the capital reserve. Sure. It, what is the interest? I mean, what is it making? Most of those banks today are one and two percent. Well, the good thing is, is I know like John is really good about putting some of our money into CDs and everything else, so he gets more of a benefit um, from a lot of the monies we have. So, like we have right now, he's got three million dollars in CDs. So he does like long-term CDs, six months. We have short-term CDs. Um, so. That's one of the good things that we have. I mean, so far, interest year to date is five thousand two hundred seventy-nine dollars and seven cents. We're two months in, and he still has three million dollars in CDs. Now you aren't going to get that interest until you cash it in. But he's pretty good about balancing those and making sure we get the, the best best interest rate we can. And so I think we get a lot of good uh, return on the CDs that he does. Uh, he started doing that a couple years ago, last, last year. Last year, so it's a win-win. We get more interest than we do if we leave it there. We're leaving it there anyway because it's capital reserve. So if he can balance that money and make us more, then he does. Article 12, uh, road repair. Uh, is is that already targeted? The particular loads, or, or is that to be ready for certain? Money? I think we every year we try to pick a you know Wayne will give us a list of roads that we want to focus on. This year he's already it's not 
like 250,000 of that Warren article is going to be for um, for Rawl Road East, right? yeah. um, but there's 400,000 in there because we have a culvert that washed out on Rawl Road West, mm -hmm. and we have to fix that, and you have to pay for that. Um, there's some road repair that has to be done on Bartlett, uh, but he's hoping to go from Middle Road to Dudley. Um, so he gives us a list of roads to do. Um, he's proposed topping those. How, how strong is the controversy related to Rumble Road? Because my understanding is that there are people that want it and people that don't want it. I think uh, last year it was uh, it was two years. So two years ago it was a little more contentious, but I think right now I think I think everyone over on that road feels it needs to be done. I know the trees has already been approved to start having those removed there. You have the hearings, we have the hearing mm -hmm. uh, here. Um, or you probably could speak more to it. I, I, I can actually. Well, the, the contentious part of it was there was no process originally. It was a, you know, basically a petition by some people on the road to, to do it without any forethought in what it needed to be done. And I feel like the town's met every obligation they needed to to do it right, you know, and, and go forward with it with Bill and Flynn and everything so that the road was properly paved and the trees are cut. And, I mean, you've done everything you could do legally to do it right. Uh, versus a couple years ago, it was just kind of thrown in there. And um, so uh, I'm satisfied with the way the town's handled it. I think they've handled it fine. And I think the meeting we had, <laughs> we had that meeting, and I think it was there, there the is that was supportive of it. The orchard is opposed to um, doing it. They're the one person on the road that is um, doesn't want the trees cut and stuff. Which, and, yeah. But they, did, they also weren't here for the public hearings for it. You know, I was here, and they didn't come and view their opinion on it. So as far as I'm concerned, they, you know, we've, anybody that's had their opportunity to voice their concerns has had it. And, you know, I mean, certainly you can do it at town meeting also, but. Well, I think know, the planning board already approved the trees, so the trees are coming down too. They had the hearing for that, yeah. it's a scenic road. So the trees will be down because they're already approved, so. Good. Okay. Um, articles 15 through 19 of the, of the of the charitable gift mm -hmm. articles. Um, what is your sense at this point of having people available to speak to each of them? And, and, and are, are there any of them that we don't need somebody to because they're built into the budget? Well, they're, they're not built into the budget if they're warrant articles. The warrant article's not built into it. One of the, um, I think one of the things we're going to be discussing is the What's the town want to do with some of these regional associations, or as I call them, donations? Um, do we want to have just a one line, you know, a one line in the budget for regional associations? Like, here's, we're willing to put this much into it, and that's the cap. And then they have to go through Karen and the welfare, and maybe having a couple people from a board on that to approve how much they get in those funding and once that funding is gone it's gone yeah. versus every year you're getting fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to put into the budget and then we get hit with another seven or eight thousand dollars worth of hey what about us too mm -hmm. and it would have say you know the town has to run and the whole purpose of taxes at least in my thought is we have to still run the town and these are taxpayer dollars. They can do fundraisers and if they want to come to a town meeting like the Girl Scouts and sell cookies or do bank sales or whatever, I'm sure we'd be able to do that for them to generate um, this extra income for their specific uh, charitable organization. Um, and I think that's what we're looking at is would it be better off to have, uh, you know, let's say just for easy numbers, $15,000 goes into that um, regional association donation mm -hmm. budget and then having some type of oversight board that basically can say yes this is how much money there is once that money's gone it's gone versus uh, you know 3,050, 1,500, 750, 1,400 I mean it just where do you start capping things so um, we're looking at that and I think we're going to be trying to get the pulse of what the town wants to do 
as far as that because we're hearing more and more people say, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute, I don't want, I'm not paying my taxes to donate to charitable organizations. And, and, and that was one of the questions I had because because I'm hearing that too from the audience at the meeting. I'm hearing that a lot. Um, more and more people. Um, I would also say that a couple of weeks ago, I heard somebody give about a 10-minute impassioned presentation about CASA, C-A-S-A. -S -A. And I thought that, um, that if you didn't have somebody to speak to that uh, and wanted somebody, uh, then that's, that particular person might be approached to come and speak. And then, then that got me thinking about the fact that, that we're always look I'm always looking around at each warrant article to see if there is somebody to speak to each of these charitable ones. And usually it's 50-50. You know. And that's where, you know, putting it into one line item yes. and having it go through the welfare process yeah. versus having it put onto a warrant article and saying, hey, I want, you know, $3,000. Mm -hmm. And then it gets approved because maybe people aren't looking at all the little stuff that starts to add up. Yeah. You know, you figure if you have... You know, if I put all these in there and I end up with thirty thousand dollars worth of charitable donations or regional association prices, if the average home pays ten thousand dollars in taxes, that's three homes that had to pay for all that donation money. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it would make sense to let it go through the welfare office to get that process taken care of. Mm -hmm. That way, and it gives a little bit more control, I think, of us knowing what's needed because they can't share with us who they're servicing, but by going through the welfare officer, and um, usually they come in, they have to fill out an application with Karen, mm -hmm. and then Karen would reach out to the welfare person, and then there's usually going to be a, a board that we would like to have, you know, select people on, and, and kind of um, get a, a better handle on it than it is right now. Seems like it's starting to get out of control, so let's try to control it. Um, are there are there any issues that uh, we have not talked about that any of you are aware of that we really ought to be aware of at the town meeting? I don't think we're going to have any issues with articles 20 through 23 um, that you have on your mm -hmm. question number nine. Mm -hmm. um, we do have on there actually number 23 is going to be where we ask about the the vendor payments to regional associations. And that's where we're, we're moving to what I just explained. Could you say a little bit more about that? That's the one where we'd like to set up um, to see if the town would vote to create a cap on the vendor payments oh. to various regional associations. Oh, oh okay. That one we already just discussed. So that one's kind of in conjunction with those other ones. But I think the POW recommendation, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't see um, any Ds. Uh, bylaws being a problem. Uh, the increase in the vet credits, I don't see that being a problem. Mm -hmm. so I, see. I think that's everything. Is there anything else you guys? No, but, but the grad one is never been approved by the town, correct? That's why we're doing that. They the changed. Year. Yeah, we want to adopt the bylaws. We never adopted that. We never adopted it, so we have to adopt that. But so 60 we, years later, we're going to adopt it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's a problem. Right. I think it's just and, kind of and those problem. are in the town report. Yeah, that's yeah. all the That's number twenty-two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see. A, I don't think anybody's going to have an issue with adopting something that's been there for sixteen years. That we just oversight. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we never approved it, so now we're going to. I hope you don't say that. Huh? I hope you're going to say that. Yeah. You're not made for Dick. Read them all. Yeah. <laughs> what do you get paid for? Guess <laughs> what? <laughs> Before the moderator or moderators leave, I want to ask the board to clarify the board's position and the moderator's position on if town meeting wants to amend a line item of the budget. The president of the United States cannot amend the line item in the budget. So why do you think you should be able? To I'm not asking if I can, and I wasn't particularly asking you, Ken. I was asking the board and the moderators. Well, I felt responsible I to answer the question. But it is a public meeting, and we do get to open these things. The, the reason I'm asking the question, Bob, is you got some advice back in November. Yep. And the information in the minutes is the position of the board and the advice they got is that town meeting can't amend a line item of the budget. Correct. Yeah, so that's and, and I want to take exception to that and say the information for National Municipal is diametrically opposed to what's in the minutes and what you said and what you talked about tonight. And 
I'm not an expert on the municipal budget law, and I, I don't have any plans to amend the budget at town meeting, but I'm certainly concerned about any usurpation of town meeting authority. And what's reflected by Bernie Waugh in New Hampshire Missile is if someone wants to make a motion to amend a particular line item of the budget that affects the bottom line, town meeting absolutely has the right to do that within the bounds of not going beyond the 10% or lowering it. And before the question comes up at town meeting and the moderator rules someone out of order, mm -hmm. I want to raise the objection in my concern tonight. I think it, they can make a motion to amend a um, an item, but my understanding is it's a recommendation. It's a recommendation. It's not binding. It only affects the bottom line. It only affects the I, bottom line. I will certainly copy the board with the information from Amsterdam Missile from Bernie Waugh, but it is, and, and I'll read it to you tonight if you want me to, but it is in direct contradiction of the information that you've gotten and what you've talked and about we got tonight. That from Walter, right? mm -hmm. Yeah, we got that from our legal counsel. Let, let's use a specific example. So I, I, and, and, just, and just to make that no, point no, no, further. No, I'm not done yet. Okay. I hate when people talk over me. It's just one of my pet peeves. So, if our legal counsel has reviewed that and he's given us that recommendation and we're going to request that we have our legal counsel there, I understand you can read it and your interpretation might be one thing. But we're also taking it from a legal expert that has interpreted and read it and is also looking at municipal law. So I understand there might be one thing that you might be looking at. I'm not an expert on that, nor will I speak to the expertise of my attorney or the town's attorney, the municipal attorney that we have that works for other municipal municipalities, not just Brentwood, and his interpretation of what can be done. Last year, there was an amendment to add $23,000 to the salary line in the highway department. We were advised that, that basically we weren't bound by that. We honored that. But I will say it's a slippery slope. If somebody gets up and they want to amend, let's say, you know, uh, Phyllis gets up, Christine's her daughter, okay, and your sister. If she gets up and she says, I want Christine to get a $25,000 raise. I don't, I don't think Christine's a line item in the budget. And, but no, and my concern, if I can articulate my concern, there was an opinion sought on a very specific legal issue, and I'm in agreement with you. Town meeting only amended the line item. It didn't change one person's salary. Yep. And my concern is that the narrow legal opinion that you sought over that narrow issue, you're now applying in general to the budget. And I'll defer to some of the people more senior than me. I, I remember going to town meeting 30 years ago. Someone would make a motion to vote the budget line by line because we wanted to limit the movement around. And that hasn't happened in a number of years. Mm -hmm. So the board taking the position that town meeting doesn't have the authority to amend the line under the budget, and I want to raise that concern now that I think you're flat out wrong. I don't, I don't, I don't agree. I was, I was very much involved back in the days when we never, uh, anything I've ever been involved with legally, you cannot, any, no line of you cannot amend the line of You can write like, the bottom line. That, so it's the overall budget. Overall budget, bottom line. Line by line, I was on, on all the boards that I've been on when I was on other things, and then other times over the years, and we never did a line, we were able to do it line at a time. When did, they, line out, like, when did they do line by line? This is, this is back in my I cross days when I wasn't really paying much attention at town meeting. <laughs> but I can assure you, I will copy the moderator with the information that I've gotten from New Hampshire Municipal. Um, I just somebody brings the issue up at town meeting and wants to amend it, I would not like the moderator to rule them out of order when in fact that's a, an opportunity that the legislative body has to tell the selectmen how we want to spend our money. And I guess I would defer that to you. I would defer that over to you also, and hopefully our legal counsel can be there. And now we at least know that that's a potential. We can ask for clarification, further clarification, so he's prepared for that. Can you send me a copy of that book? Yeah, I'll, I'll, and I'm going to go to Doug. And I he's also say, a lot of Remember one thing, and that is the town, the legislative body has the right on other things to be wrong. In other words, the the, the, the <coughs> party can, can do whatever they wish, and they have the right to do that. But that doesn't make them right, and that can be set out at a later time. How does it work? And I, I'm just putting this out there because I don't know. How would it work? Like, I know there's no limit on going down. What would happen if somebody made a... You actually reconstruct the budget 
after it goes down to zero. You bring it up by department, but not by line. At the meeting? At the meeting. By department? By department. Now, do you have any idea how long a meeting that's going to be? <laughs> Two or three days. Bring your lunch. We'll see yeah. <laughs> bring your lunch, girls. Got to please. Which, which would just yes. make light of Butch's point of you would be doing a line by line by budget. I, if I can respond to what Kent said, there's nothing to prevent the selectmen after town meeting vote to move money between lines. That's but that correct. would be. That is correct. Right. Uh, but that would be thwarting the will of the voters. But the selectmen absolutely have that authority. That's my understanding. Right. So it's not mine. You would have to move the money from another line item. Right. You know, I know many people in this room remember Richard Nixon, and he tried desperately. I don't remember him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he had the dog ball patches. A little younger. <laughs> he tried desperately to change that rule. The President of the United States does not have the right to alter a line item. We're not talking about the President. But I we are now. I will, I, will, I will say something to you that may be pertinent to this issue. In the years that I have served on the Budget Committee, we were always guided by the principle that we ultimately have authority over the bottom line. That we can't go in because there was some there was some controversy regarding the school while I was on the budget committee. Um, we we never had the ability to go line by line on the school budget, for example, and say we we want you to cut this. And what what we were able to do is to say, here's how much money. We're going to prove, or this is what we think your budget should be, and where you make those cuts is certainly up to the school board and the administration of the school. The budget committee never had the authority to go in there and say, "Well, cut a teacher, or get reduce the principal salary, or we're not going to provide any paper." Those kinds of issues just never occurred. Similarly, when we went through the budgets for the town departments, the same kind of thing occurred. We could make recommendations. We could make suggestions. Here's a way that you might be able to get to that number. But we never had the authority to say, this is where you make the cut. So that's the, the guidance that I used then, and it's the guidance that I'm using now, is that we have the ability to say, or the, not we, the town as a legislative body has the ability to say, we want you to cut this budget by X number of dollars. And we're recommending that you do it at this line. But the, the board is not bound by that recommendation. We could take that recommendation and say, you know, that'd be the easiest way to do it and we'll do that. Or we can just say, look, you cut the number and we'll have to deal with it however what best we can to, to the benefit of the town. Let, let's take a very specific example. The, uh, the municipal budget in the police department uh, has got raises uh, for police officers uh, to try to bring them up to some of the surrounding community. I, I think what I, now there may be people in the audience uh, that would feel that the police shouldn't have raises uh, and, and they would try to deal with that. I think what I'm hearing uh, is that there's no way on earth uh, that uh, the question of raises can be line item. But what I think I'm hearing is that the entire department's budget uh, could be uh, amended to be decreased, uh, and, and, then, and then Ellen would have to determine how to pass all that up. Right, she, so, so th that actually came up with the police department's budget, for example. Mm -hmm. Selectman recommended one thing, the budget committee was recommending a different number. We were comfortable with giving the full-time officers, as was rec recommended, and asked for a 6% wage adjustment mm -hmm. and raise, mm -hmm. increase, salary increase, and a 4% wage adjustment salary increase for the part-time officers. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at the budget committee, they were looking at, you know, overall, this is what we're comfortable with, and that might only mean a 4% or a 3% and a 4%. And ultimately, they came in and said, this is the number. Fortunately, we were able to look at it. There was uh, an officer, a newer officer, that didn't take benefits. 
that relieves some of that money that we have so we can still afford to be able to go back in and do a 6% and a 4% and we agree with the number from the budget committee but the number has actually we're still the chief is still allowed to give those raises out as as requested um, of 6% and 4% based on um, the budget if it gets approved as is. Now if somebody goes in and cuts it, well yeah, maybe they we give up on save some money on vehicle maintenance or you save some improvements here or maybe you don't get a uniform or they don't go to training here but you can still give the raises. Mm -hmm. And th that would be the bottom line, the effect would be the effect of the bottom line. But if somebody said, I don't want to give them a 4%, we could do that. But I think once we get the funds, it's a matter up to us to balance that, that activity. Yeah. And then I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go there. <laughs> <coughs> well, Ed, I, I, it's not a question. My, my suggestion is that you have council, town council, at the meeting. And always a good idea. When they issue an opinion, they, they stake their reputation on it and get to defend it if need be in court. <clears throat> and the last thing to remember is that budget committees are in charge of budget oversight, but the selectmen are always responsible for the prudential affairs of the town. And that is exactly, I think, the way the RSA is written. Mm -hmm. So the ultimate responsibility mm -hmm. is the people who, who pay the bills. Right. And that, 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 that <laughs> legislative body also means you have the right to be wrong, but you have to live with it. Right, yeah. And, and you did the budget committee for years, right? You name it, and Longer than I've been alive. I haven't served on the cemetery committee yet. <laughs> I haven't, and I haven't served on the school board, but I've, I've tried almost everything else. But if, if, if is that right? Our understanding is that basically they give you the budget and then the select bin have to figure out how that all works, right? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. the budget committee has a right to put together a budget if the select bin administrators fail to. But they don't get to run the town. Right. We lived with this for years in Hampton with Mary Louise Woolsey and the budget committee and she tried to run the town from the, from the beach. It, it, it goes on and on and on. It goes on in every town. <coughs> I'm going to pop over to work. Uh, I'm just curious. How, uh, I have a question for Butch. How long is the the um, the, the, the law you, the, the law you're speaking of? How long is the paragraph? It's actually what I went to. I, when I'm, I have a question, if I can speak to it, Mr. Sure. Chairman, if I have a question about municipal law, when the selectmen are talking about something and I don't know about it, I go to the New Hampshire Municipal website and look for the opinions that are of general interest to everyone. And, and there was a topic all about town meetings, and Bernie Waugh, who's been the New Hampshire Municipal Attorney for years, spoke to that very issue. And it's something the board talked about back in November because of the vote at last year's town meeting. And my concern in general is I, I don't have any plans to make any motions to town meeting at this point, but when the selectmen are talking about changing the legislative authority of town meeting, I want to raise the concern now. And my further concern was that there was a very specific legal question asked of council, and it's being applied broadly to the town budget. So uh, well, my, I'm certainly willing to concede I could be wrong on this, but, well, I, but I think the selectmen are wrong. If it's a paragraph, could you read it to us right now? Go ahead. Only if the chairman asks. I, this is a whole pamphlet, but uh, it's written by Bernie Waugh, New Hampshire Municipal, and it's a bunch of what things about town meeting. What is I'm not reading an RSA, Lois. That's the law. <laughs> This is this is Bernie Waugh's interpretation of the law. This is available on New Hampshire Municipal. I looked it up. Waugh? Doesn't he? Waugh? Bernie Waugh. Doesn't he have an RSA that and, he's referring to? And, and I will be uh, happy to post this on Facebook, on Brentwood Talks, and Brentwood Chats, <laughs> so anybody can read it later. But it's simply New Hampshire Municipal Association, New Hampshire Town and City Magazine, uh, 16 Things Every Citizen Should Know About Town Meeting. And it's written by New Hampshire uh, Town and City, Bernie Waugh with an update from Cordell Johnson. And there's a bunch of things about town meeting. The one of particular interest that we're talking about right now was what can the town meeting do? And the, the line that Wardy just asked you to read was, it says, number 14, you can act on or amend a particular item in the budget. The proposed budget must be posted with a warrant and is considered, you know what, I'd feel better if the chairman read this. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> left. He reads fast. Sir. Number 14? Let me give you the whole thing. 
So starting right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number 14, you can act on or amend particular line items in a budget. The pur proposed budget must be posted with a warrant, which it will be. It is considered part of the warrant, giving you notice of what you're going to raise and appropriate money for. To appropriate money means to earmark a certain sum for a particular purpose so that the governing board, selectman or select board, um, is then authorized to spend that amount for the purpose over the course of the fiscal year. Money can be appropriated either through a line item in a budget or under a separate warrant article. The amount of any particular appropriation of line item can be amended up or down or an appropriation can be deleted entirely by the voters. However, it is not legally effective to add a new pur purpose line item to the budget. Why not? Because adding a new purpose violates rule number six above. I guess I'd have to go to rule number six. The requirement that all business must be stated in the warrant. The voters can't take any binding action on a subject matter which wasn't stated in the warrant or in this case in the budget. Some people believe that voters can only act on or amend the bottom line of the budget and not specific line items. That's not quite right. Um, what is right is the voters cannot limit the governing board's ability to transfer the amounts from one line item to another during the year as needed and priorities change. And that was a court uh, case cited McDonald versus Derry. Yeah. Uh, therefore, even if you do vote to lower, say mm -hmm. the budget by $1,000, the selectman later in the year can replace $1,000 into the police budget. Um, as long as they don't exceed the bottom line of the entire budget. And it gives you a hint. Transfers cannot be made from appropriations made by separate warrant articles, RSAs, right. gives an RSA on it. Therefore, the way to prevent an appropriation from being diverted to other purposes is to submit a petition warrant article for that appropriation. But just because only the bottom line is legally binding does not mean the voters can amend line items. The voters have a legal and political right to express their preferences. A vote on specific line items sends a strong message that may later be enforceable through the ballot box, even if it's not enforceable in court, which I think so substantiates what the, saying. what uh, our legal say. Yeah. Yeah, basically yeah. says you can up it. So what that says is that if the town votes to change a line item and we don't follow the wishes of the line item, they have the ultimate authority by voting us out of office. Cool. That's what that means. I'll take you to court. They can take us to court, but it's not enforceable in court what it just said. What they can do is they can vote us out. Yeah, and it says uh, number six, because it referenced number six. No vote can be legally binding unless its subject matter was stated in the warrant. Mm -hmm. Has to be in the warrant. Has to be in the warrant. Mm -hmm. The warrant is a sort of agenda for the town meeting, which is posted two weeks in advance by the selectmen. In most towns, it's also printed in the town report, published before the annual meeting. The requirement that all subject matter must be stated in the warrant, RSA 39 colon 2, okay. keeps the meeting orderly, prevents surprise, and lets voters who might otherwise stay home know that some topic of interest to them is coming up for discussion and possible action. The warrant law requires only the general subject matter to be stated. The actual votes don't have to be word for word as word for word the same as the warrant articles. You don't have to take or leave it. Amendments will be legally valid so long as they are within the same general subject matter, but amendments which add some brand new subject matter will not be legally effective. <coughs> so I guess if somebody adds something different to it, then it wouldn't be like legally binding. It has to be posted ahead of time. It has time. to be posted before. Can, can anybody here remember a time when there has been an amendment? Thanks, Butch, for that. To a line item. Yeah, last year. Last year. Last year. Well, right, okay, but, but beyond <laughs> that, can, can anybody 
think of it. I'm going to defer to Doug since he's been doing it for yeah. 20,000 years. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. He's been doing it for He's been doing it since Jeeves <laughs> came out. I have, and I, and, and I, <laughs> no, you're not. I hope you be on Jeeves break from the way I <laughs> <laughs> Good, I didn't bring it with me. So. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, remember, I may remember some way, way back, but not, not in recent years. Not in recent years. No. I mean, I think you last year. I it's been after longer than I've been in the Right. <laughs> Um, I think last year was kind of an. Um, it, it was not. It was, it was, not just, it was out, Yeah, it was. It was out of the ordinary. It was so, very out of the ordinary. So I think. I think we we did our due diligence by reaching out to council. I'll have, you know, I would like to have Karen reach out to Walter, our legal counsel again, and just get clarification. Yeah. But it also give them, help them be prepared, when they're at the town meeting, and also help us to be prepared. Well, so if I it does come up, we know what we can do. Say that. I, I think both Doug and I would, would like some clarification at this point. Okay. Yeah. That, that's all that I have. Okay. So, so I understand this. So um, say this year, a said individual from whatever, the highway department gets up there and says, I want to I wanna amend this to whatever for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. how, what's the, how you, for, you, you honored that with Wayne. Mm -hmm. How you, you're not obligated to honor that, correct? Correct. Correct. So, in my understanding, say something like this happened again this year. What What's the board's stance on it? We are you gonna? I think I would say we're gonna have to go into that would be a performance based situation, and we would be looking at executive session. The executive, <laughs> non-public, how you give somebody a raise and how you uh, recognize them for their accomplishments or take into consideration maybe there are not so good accomplishments or lack of accomplishments. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, not every employee is a good employee. I'm sure Mike would agree to that. He owns a business. Sometimes you get employees that you go, oh, oh, oh boy. Mm -hmm. And then there's other times you're like, wow, this person's a star. So we should be rewarding the ones that are stars and maybe not rewarding the ones that aren't performing. I'm not, I'm not necessarily referring to uh, uh, paying somebody something. I'm just saying, uh, say somebody wanted to put money in a light item for the highway department to fix their own road or whatever. How, yeah. how, um, how is that going to be handled? That is what I'm saying. It could be any specific thing in a line item is what I'm getting at. Yeah. <clears throat> Technically, we can't answer that today because next week, this board's going to be a different makeup. So whatever that board next week decides to do, because that's what the RSA says. We can spend the money the way we deem financially sound. Yeah, we don't have to. So next week, there's going to be a new makeup of the board. And at that time, then the board would have to vote how to spend the money. Just trying to understand it, that's all. But I mean, if somebody got up and said, you know, uh, I'd like for the police department to have a new tank. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. It's where does it stop? It specifically uh, says you're supposed to ahead of time. It has to be in a warrant. It has to be notified of the vote. I'm going to bump over. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go to Robin after. I'm going to agree with Lois, and that is the budget is the budget. You can move money around. Warrant articles are very specific. You can only use that money for that. You know, for, for, for example, for years, Brentwood has put a certain amount of highway funds and a warrant article would be used for specifically for road repair. Can't be used for anything else that isn't used, it goes back in the budget. Yeah, it goes back to the general time run. Right. And then it gets turned back over. So that's kind of the answer. To kind of, and that's the purpose. Is if they put money in the budget and you guys feel it, or the board and feel they have to move it, and I, as far as I can tell, you have every right to do it based on need. And of course, whether you're running for re-election or not. Yeah, I mean, let's say, uh, <laughs> let's say, Ward, you got up and said, I think there should be a bottle of maple syrup bought by, I want one bottle for every single household. I'm going to make that motion. Everyone says, we love Ward. Everyone gets a bottle of maple syrup. Well, how much is it going to cost me? <laughs> then we have to look at it. He would be doing cartwheels. He might pay for all the road himself. All right, Robin, I'm going to go to you because you have a question. So thank you. That was part of what I was going to say. Uh, warrant articles are separate. and they, that, That's not at the discretion of the, of the board. Uh, but from what I think I understand um, what Butch brought to the table here and what you're saying, bottom line is all that you are obligated to, um, to do. 
However, and this has gone on in the past, when, when a specific line item is brought up, we hope that we're not called out of order, that we are, and we do have the right as a legislative body to address these things and to discuss them. I know that ultimately you guys have the right to move it around how you feel, but if we decide to pass $50,000 for maple syrup, it is a, a strong recommendation to the board that that's what the people want. So right, and that's what better. they did last year. Yes, yeah. and, 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 and so while you're not obligated to do it, and it is a recommendation, I'm hoping that the board takes it as um, a strong suggestion from the people. Yeah, well, and I think that's where the art, the, the... That's what it sounded like. It says saying. in there, you yeah. do it at your own peril, right? And we were told that last year. Yeah. If you don't do it, you do it at your own peril, because then you still have to come up for election, and then that's when yeah. elections have consequences. So... <laughs> it's kind of that fine balance. I'm through. Is that everything? I'm through. Are you good? Thank you. I'm good. good. I'm good. Good night, Thank you. Richard. Well, I'm going to stay for Thank a while. Thank you. That was a great conversation. And thanks, Butch, for bringing that in. I appreciate it. Did you guys want to the Um, sure. David's doing all of them. Because this is last time, be and we're, you're going to be there. I so we're going to come get you. Orient Pro, we're going to be there before two. So. <laughs> we have reservations. Yes, or can sir. you bring a couple things of maple syrup? Yeah. Pour them on the ground, they'll follow. I love your eyes. The Chinese food, I will be He's there. He's diabetic. Yeah. He's going to be kind of all excited. Well, you should be the first. You're on the budget committee. You should. That should be yours. Yes. First one. Okay. That should be yours. Okay. I'll do the first one. You better do the second too. <clears throat> I'm going to hand it off to Jeff Dunn. No, that's well, Jeff. Jeff's that's conservation. Uh, what, well, Jeff's going to do number two. Yeah. Is he going to make the motion? Well, somebody has to bring it up. We'll have to make the motion. We'll make the motion. I'm on the conservation. Yeah, you should bring it up. You should make the motion. Yeah, and then yeah. she hand it off to Jeff. Let's do it. And you probably have enough background on it, too, right, from the conservation? I'm just going to bring it up, like Jeff. Did okay. <laughs> um, so the solar? Let's cut and dry one. That's easy, right? That's yeah, that's I do that one. It's an easy one. Oh. Yeah, oh. It's an easy one. Right, because you're liking it so easy, we're going to have you go to the number four, too, right? And one? how about doing number five? Yeah. What's four? Yeah. The software? I, I'm retired, Doug. I'm retired. You're doing four and five? Am I? Yeah. Both yeah. <laughs> hardware and software. I don't know if it's doing three. Three and yeah. five. Yeah. I got three, four, five. Okay. Oh. The reevaluation, you want to do that, Andy? Sure. Oh. Phil, okay. where are you? We're going to do number six. seven. Number six. You're going to do six? No, Andy's doing six. Oh. Okay, you're going to do seven. 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 Seven is my time. Oh. Andy's, doing seven. Andy's doing seven. Andy's doing six or seven? Eight. Hey. Come on, Luke. Phil gets to do eight? Good night, Richard. Five way? Good night. Work's gaping. Phil's eight? Okay. And how about uh, number nine? Sure. I'll do number 10. Uh, fire department lease. I'll do that one too. Road repair. Do you want me to do that? That's okay. That's going to be a raw road too. Yeah, that'll be fun. You should do the police department okay. committee, right? That should be yours. I'll do the police department one. That's fine. How many have you got? What are you doing, Molly? How many have you got now? Uh, yeah, you're doing the vehicle replacement. There you go. You're going to do 14. Okay. You're not going to wait. Okay. It's your last time. We're going to go out with a hurrah with you. So give me 14. Phyllis, you have the rest. I'm sorry, Phyllis. Phyllis gets to do all the, all the donations this for us. I'm sorry. And then we'll do what you can take. I don't care. You're Actually, the, no, the, the next ones are all very easy. They all go through. There will be people who will be there, right? What do you they want me to do? No, make the motion. Make yeah. the motion, yeah. No, because then it's going to be deferred to. Just say if somebody there. from Castle are there and they say there is, if they're not, you said this is it. All right, so what have I got? 15 through 19. 15, 16, 17. 15 through 19. Excuse me. What does TASC stand for? It's a transportation. It gives, hand, it gives people that have... Yeah, but what, what does TASC actually stand for? It's got to stand for something. Transportation yeah. yeah. task. Yeah, I know it's task. Transportation <laughs> assistance. Senior. Senior. Senior? Yeah, yeah okay. Services? <laughs> services? <laughs> Senior care. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Senior care? No. Uh -huh. what? Transportation assistance for Seacoast citizens. Okay, oh, yeah. thank, thank you, you, sir. You're welcome. Google told me. Google told me. Good job. Google's going to tell you everything.
But they didn't choose by people in town. They use Bob, it. Bob, I can be yeah. useful sometimes. There you go. I didn't even see you back there. How are you doing? How are you? Good, thanks. All right, and then... Well, Bill's a vet. He's only one vet. Bill, are you doing the vet? I'll do the vet, sure. Because we just tired out Phyllis for doing six They gave her too many. I'll do POW, too. You're doing POWs, too? I'll do POW, too. Andy? Andy? And... You have 20. Oh, you have 20. Yeah, you know what's going on. Who's doing 20? I'll, uh, Andy's going to do it. Andy. Phil, you're doing 21, right? 21, uh, yeah. Did we give enough things to Dave? No, I got four. He's got one, two, three, four, and on. Three. This last four. meeting. Three again. One, yeah. Four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's, 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 he should really have ten. Yeah, he should have ten. I know. Amazing, huh? Tell us whatever you don't want, whatever you don't want to do, give to Dave. You just look at him and say, Dave, it's yours. Right. If it gets to be one o'clock, you're still there. I'm leaving. You get tired. Once they swear swear the new select course, I'm done. So, see ya. I'm getting tired. My hands are clean. Can you take this? I'll have the table ready to get up there. Please do. Can I practice now with Dave? Can you take this? The table for 10, Carol. Is somebody Usually one of us just say that. You get up and say, we'll say, I second. Yeah. And they, and they want to speak on it, then nobody's there that you can ask about. You think he'll be 10? No. Well, it's last year we were 10 of us. Yeah, we did. Do we have the Sundays? Remember the days when we used to film the hall? Are you filming? I have a motion for the minutes. Oh, oh, shot. Oh, 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 we have a motion for the minutes? Last week's? Yeah. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. No, I'm in public. We're in Germany, right? Is that no, that's not it. We have the film. We're still in the meeting, so I just I move we allow the chairman to sign off on Unifirst Insurance. Do I have a second? Is that a change or something, or is that just? <coughs> the, the highway uniforms, and it's just signing that you're waiving the extra maintenance program. We don't need it. Maintenance, they get torn, they get replaced and all that. Um, that's what it's waiting. Wayne thought it would be less expensive to just pay for the uniforms. <coughs> right here, to pay for the extra coverage. Oh, actually, okay. So if they get replaced, we just buy them. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, otherwise you're gonna pay twenty-five. Right. Yeah. Who made the motion? I did. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Are they opposed? Is there a number of people you can have under that program? On this? Yeah. I don't believe there's a cap. So, so like, we do that to get the maintenance person, they could be under that. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the new intent to excavate for Madison property. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? That is the one one from Madison's family. Did they even give you stamps? He does. That's awesome. <coughs> I thought we did that last week. No, we did that last week. You did the gravel tax. This is his new project. Oh, it was a tax, yes. And then this is a memo to authorize the full release of a bond for Divya Oil at the recommendation of Glenn Greenwood <coughs> and the Floating Board. And this is to release $2,902.59. The project has been complete and due to the age of the bond. It's like 10 years. It's like 10 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Do we have a motion? Money. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody opposed? So we got this note, and I know one of the things that we brought up before. Oh, my first blush, but sorry, my glasses on, I can't see. <laughs> um, we brought up, now oh, I have to put the glasses back on so I can see. Um, we met 
Uh, we got a note back on uh, Dan Wick's certification. Council met last week to accept Dan Wick's federal certification. What this means is that he received a waiver from having to go to the New Hampshire full-time academy. In lieu of the academy, he will need to complete the law package and the physical. Since they have accepted his certification and he's completed the his FTO period, uh, he is good to go and is able to patrol on his own. For further information, a recent rule change allows new officers who have been granted PT and E to work as follows. Each newly appointed or sworn uh, uncertified police corrections and probation parole officer shall work only in direct presence of New Hampshire certified police corrections or probation parole officer as applicable until such time as he or she shall satisfactorily complete the police corrections or probation parole basic training program except if the council upon review of the uncertified officer's prior training experience grant certification based successfully successful completion of a reciprocal certification process and the officer has completed the agency's field training program the uncertified officer may work under normal supervision pending completion of the reciprocal certification process. What's FTO? What's FTO? Field training office. Oh, That's it. Okay. They just from the right there. Yeah. The FT, oh, I wonder what's, what's PT&E. PT &E? What's that? What is it? Police <laughs> training or something, right? <laughs> Please stand as in training council. Yeah. But that's not the that's not PT. That's not the abbreviation. It's PT and then the and symbol and then E. Google. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adam's all over there. Oh, Google. Uh, PT and E. <laughs> so I know there's some questions Police about training prior and training and experience, maybe. Yeah, PT and E. Right. Yeah, so they, they I, use that phrase a lot if you read their minutes. Prior right. training. The experience. tennis club in Portland. <laughs> Sometimes Google doesn't work. Yeah. PT <laughs> and E is important. Would the chairman interpret that letter for the benefit of the rest of us to well, don't I, really I understand have, what I that a, means? I have a question. What it before means before we get there, I have a question. Is there some time frame when he has to do the physical? I know I there's a time months. frame on the law package. He had six, six months. months to do a physical? He has six months to do the law package and the physical, all right? Yeah, but the physical, yeah. he I, I Doesn't he have to do the physical prior to the law package? Under the law package, I think he has to he do the law package and then the physical? Is that how it works? No, you have to do the physical. He has to do the law package. They will call him to schedule his physical. He has yeah. up to six months to do that, but he can request extensions up to two years. For the physical? Yes. Wow. But it has to be approved by council, Correct. each extension. And that, and that doesn't stop, prohibit him from patrolling in the meantime under normal supervision. What's normal supervision? He would well, report to David and he would report to Helen Hell because they're the upper command. Whether they're on duty or not. I, I'm, I yeah, I mean, whatever, you know, like, so he can normally go out and patrol and if something comes up, he has to report back to them and, you know, hey, I got, you know, there's a robbery over here at Lindy's. What do I do? Well, current procedures call for an officer who's in a situation to contact his immediate supervisor or goes up the hierarchy. Right. So that doesn't seem like much of a change at all. Yeah. Because it's normal. Whatever the normal su supervision would be, sometimes the officers are out there by themselves. So. Right. It seems like an awful long time for a I, I'm concerned about that time frame, but I, I guess it's, if it's no. I understand what you're saying. Is their policy? I, I, I can't change I just, the state's policy. Well, if we want to make sure he's physically able to perform the job before we say to him, "Okay, you're turn free. Here you go. See you later." Yeah, I have a little trouble with that, but that's me. It's also the council's. The council's going with it, and the board wants to. They've accepted it. His, um, I I voiced my objection to him not being able to perform the physical before he was on duty. But that's just one person. So. We thought very few jobs that you have to don't have to do a physical first. I, right. I would think. I think he's got a wealth of experience. If he's got great credentials, I'm concerned that he can't pass the physical, and that's a huge problem if you're. Well, you they, should, so. they have to schedule it. So. I know. So I'm just, I want to voice that objection. That's I mean, we have, <coughs> I know if we have 
other officers that get hired, if we replace a position and they go to the academy, they're going to do the physical stuff at the academy, but they're still going to be here doing all their stuff beforehand. So, for, uh, tag. Bruce Bush gets it first. Is, is it part of Brentwood's police uh, operating protocols that every new hire has to pass a physical before they're offered employment? I'd have to look at the SOPs. They do a pre-employment physical. And they go through Center for Occupational Health for a medical screening. So he would already have a medical screening and a pre-hire physical. So the best, to the best of the board's knowledge, an individual, any individual hired for the police department passes that physical agility test before they're offered employment. Yeah, no. they would have went through some type of screening or physical stuff beforehand. They would have had a physical but No, we're talking two different physicals. That physical agility yeah. test was new. Chief R. Cherry coming on board. Prior to that, the officers were only required to do the medical health history physical through Central Occupational Health prior to and then getting certified through the academy. I, I guess I'll, if the There's chairman will allow me to ask sure. a specific question. It's my understanding that anybody offered employment since Chief R. Cherry came on board has to pass the physical agility test before the town of Brentwood offers or extends employment. And, and I guess the question I'm asking in this case was that waived in this case? Is the board aware of it being waived, or does the board have no knowledge of that being waived? I would have to defer to look at the the operating procedures if that's been adopted into those operating procedures, if that's her I wish on her department. That's a new one. I haven't read it, so I <coughs> Is this the one that was adopted? I don't know. Or proposed? I don't know. Is that proposed or adopted? I don't remember if we, did we have, we reviewed the first 2016, in effect 717-2012, review date 717-2016. So no, I, I don't think, I think they brought it up 10-9-2-18, but I don't think we voted on it. We haven't voted on yeah. any new changes, yeah, right. so this we is from 2012. Yeah. 2012? Yeah. That's the date on that, right? 2012? That was reviewed. But I, I, I thought sure. Karen just said that this policy was put in place when Alan started. Our chair came on board. Yeah, isn't that, I mean, that's the information that was just given to us, is that this was a policy put in place by Ellen when she was hired, that every officer passes a physical agility test. Right, but if reasonable accommodations can be made in certain instances, depending on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, but if you haven't addressed it, how can that be true now? Right. We haven't added it to, we haven't changed the SOPs, have we? I don't know that it's been officially adopted, but that's the practice that she had discussed with the board prior to when she posted the positions. That was the process right. that she wanted to But we haven't, we haven't modified the SOPs. Is what's it in the, the old one? What's the date on that one? <laughs> I think it's 16. Was it 2016? It was reviewed in 2016. But there was a date <coughs> in October. It was in October 2012, the prior to that. Oh, okay. What's the date on it? October 18. Because it was adopted in us and you reviewed it. Reviewed in July of 2016. But on the back, go on the back, on the back page, there's a date of October something at the top. But it's not, that one isn't signed. I don't know if there's one signed. It was printed, printed on 10-1. Oh, that one? That's not. Well, then in effect, in effect July 17, 2012, reviewed on July 17, 2016, and this was printed on. Because printed on 10-1. Because she brought it up to us, I think. 2018, but we haven't adopted or changed anything. What's it happening? Is there anything in that one from 2012? Where the heck is? Personal lineups. Personal lineups. Yeah, so she was appointed in 18, so this is... It's been printed, but it hasn't been changed. Because I think she brought them up to us, and then she never came back to... Yeah, she had to correct some, I think. Right. Bill has some corrections. Back, right. So is there anything in there about that, about what we're talking about? No. I'm not seeing anything in there. So it looks like it's still the way it was before. Could you clarify what you're, what you're reading? Because the police department has some adopted this is standards. The, Brentwood Police Review. Department, this is the uh, policy G25. That's a department SOP. This is the department SOPs. It's 
uh, how they identify people. Is, is that an update to all the SOPs that the department has, or just specifically to the hiring? That has nothing to do with hiring. Yeah, that's. This is about. Well, there's one for the animal control officer. Yeah, number got. That this is all about identification process. About Different SOP. Yeah. Nothing to do with hiring. Is this all you have? I just have, that's all I have. I have animal control. Yeah. That one wasn't. No. That's all I have. That's all we got. Sure. Just to address. My concern is really clear. My concern is that, that there were some very specific job postings that were put out. My belief is that they also included a requirement to pass a physical agility test. I haven't done my homework on this issue. And my concern is whether the board, if, if in fact something was waived, whether this board knew about it or whether that's just been delegated to the chief and she can waive those requirements at her discretion. Well, I don't think she's waiving them. I think uh, she's going in accordance with what the council has, they've accepted this certification. I, I, and I don't mean to confuse the chairman, but when you go to work for a law enforcement agency, typically you have to pass, and I heard it discussed at this meeting, the guys are all going to do the physical agility test. Mm -hmm. And if someone doesn't pass the physical agility test, they're not offered employment, right. unless that's been waived. And my question is, if the chief decided to waive that, did the board know about it when they offered employment to somebody, or is that not under the purview of the Board of Selectmen, you've left that up to the chief, whether she waived the job requirement or not? Well, it looks like he's already he's received the waiver from the academy. He will need to complete I, I, the law package in the physical. So I'm going to defer to the fact that they're saying he has to complete the law package in the physical. I will go on record again, mm -hmm. saying that having talked with them directly, they told me he has to pass his physical. They didn't give me a time frame. What? Oh. They also told me he has to pass his law package, and I understand that the law package has an extended period of time for him to do that. It's CDs passing the law and all the laws. My understanding, and I'm not going to swear to this at all, but my understanding is that he was at, at the past physical to be able to come on board and work independently. I don't think he's done that. I read here in the notes that we have that he's been given a waiver to go to the full-time academy. In lieu of going to the academy, he will need to complete the law package and physical. If he's been given a waiver or he's been given a dispensation from that, it's not, I, I have no knowledge. I, I will just say that. Right. And the only thing I can say is from this right here that they've accepted his certification and they've given him a waiver. So <coughs> I don't know what the certification processes are or what's included in that. I have no idea. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I'm confusing you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. To get hired by the Bremen Police Department, there's a specific set of requirements that I believe also include you have to pass the physical agility test before the town offers you employment. And, and what I'm trying to ascertain, just so the no fact is out there, is whether if someone was hired and they couldn't meet that standard, whether it was the board that would waive that requirement or whether that's the chief that would waive that requirement. And I believe what you're telling me is the board has no knowledge of that requirement ever being waived. And I have no knowledge of that being a requirement. Because yeah. I don't have that SOP in front of me. So right now it's a hypothetical potential Required. Oh, I'm sure. So sure. you don't know if it's actually a requirement or not? I, I, will, I will check my SOPs. Just I know from past meetings I've been, I've heard the chief discuss, we have to have everybody do the physical, yep. and we're going to narrow down the application. And he is going to do, and well, and again, like Karen said, they still have to go through some type of occupational testing and screening, right? Mm -hmm. Do a physical being in the court. So they what did do some it? type of physical. I'm going to go to work. Um, isn't there, a, on a, when you post a job, is a set forth the requirements that are required to, to get hired. Like when, you, when the town of Brentwood posts a job for a police officer, it says you're going to do, you're going to be certified in this X Y Z, pass a physical uh, exam, blah blah blah. And then on top of that, I think, or underneath that, would be the job description of what the officers need to do. And it should be, if you had the application for high for the job posting, it should say clearly in there what's what's expected at the time. Right, they're still going to have to get certified, which they are, they, the council has agreed to accept the certification. And then typically, I know they're going to have to pass a law package. And my understanding is that they then have to do, I thought he had to do the law package, pass the law package, and then they, then they do a schedule for him to go through a physical training. And my understanding is he has up to six months to do that law package. I under, my understanding also, I didn't know about the two years, 
if, if he can ask for an extension or not. But my understanding is that he had to get that uh, whatever, <coughs> you know, run in and it's, it's, it's like 18 minutes to run a mile and a half. Um, it's not that hard. Um, I can walk that to it. I can walk it. <laughs> um, but that's, 18 not the, that's not the issue. And then no, there's, there's certain things and it's based on age and, and I know it has to be done in Concord at the academy because they certify that. As far as passing like drug tests and everything else that we would normally do when we hire somebody, I know if we hire somebody full time this week. So the next academy is not till May. I can't do anything with them. They're still going to be working for us, going through the process of training and reading and doing ride alongs and everything else until they go to the academy in May. They wouldn't finish the law package and the physical until I think they would get out in the end of August. Yep, go ahead. Uh, so this is direct from the Brentwood Police Department posting. Testing process includes a written exam, physical agility test, oral interview, background investigation, psychological eval, and polygraph exam. So that's on their... Before you get requirements. Like right, that's on their requirements. So just so... I guess there's no question on that. That's their requirement. So I would assume if a requirement was waived for a town employee, the select board should be aware of it. Well, yeah, and I don't think we've waived anything. I think the... Well, we did. He didn't do a physical agility test that anybody knows about. He's done some type of physical, and or he's gotten a certification, but it doesn't give you a time frame on there when it has to be done, does it? Well, no, it says this is a pre-hire. This is pre-hire. It doesn't say that. That's a, that's, a, that's a job description. That's what I was... Job this is a job description. Right. Right? It so it says the it testing started. process, right, is all these things, physical agility, oral interview. Would you have an oral interview after you get the job or before? Before. Before, right? A polygraph? Before. These are all things that are requirements to get a job with the Brentwood Police Department. We can change words around all we want, but if you read a job description and you apply for a job online, they don't say, well, you can do all those things later after we hire you, but we're going to give you the job first. Right. I wasn't there for what. I sit on the board, we're hiring a couple, five times. Everybody that came before us had gone through that part. I did not sit with Sergeant Wick, that was I wasn't on that side. So our newest hires have done a physical agility. The test. newest people that we've offered so did jobs to, which they are here, we don't all went through that before they would come into the discussion. Okay. 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 So So can we assume that you that the board will find out if the correct process was followed well, through verification when we hired. and I know we did have a member on this board that went through that hiring process. So. Okay. Awesome. I have one other Thing and then I'll believe it or not, it's about the police department. Who would have thought? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Captain Roy yep. submitted his retirement. Uh, no, we haven't received anything in writing from him. So if somebody can say to us that they're inquiring about retirement, okay. but until I get it in writing, uh, we've learned from past experience. If somebody says they're retiring, until you get it in writing, you don't do anything until it comes in writing because they have to file from. Brock Bush will probably tell me if you retire. Are you, you waiting just, to hear from the retirement board or from the individual? The individual has to send some paperwork, if I remember correctly, right? And we haven't heard from him yet. I, I we having it's been five years since I retired, and I'm, I'm not sure how the term, but I mean, from. generally the employee submits their intent to retire, tells their employer, and then it takes a a fairly substantial time for the retirement system to then follow through and send. This we haven't to received have to anything out. in writing. With, I haven't received anything in writing yet of confirmation of that from David. Okay. So I wouldn't put it out there in the public because right now it's alleged that and you, R you know, rumored. It's, it's rumored. rumored. There you go. Rumored. That, Perfect that work. Captain Roy. So it's rumored retire. that he's yeah. going to retire. Yeah. yeah. Well, has Cameron had to sign his retirement papers yet? Have you signed to go out to retirement. I have not. He hasn't given you those. This so we don't even have any retirement paperwork yet. Has anybody else left that we know of? No, no, no. There's another rumor that I heard, so. There's, There's not a lot of people left to leave, Bill. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just well, want to make a comment. I don't want my comments to be misconstrued. I think it's great that somebody that lives in our community steps up and wants to be part of an agency in town. They certainly need the help. What, what I'm, the point I'm driving at is, there may be occasions when it makes sense to waive a job requirement. Maybe the person doesn't have the degree and that was a job requirement. Maybe they couldn't meet the physical agility test, but I, I want my selectmen to do that knowingly. I want our police chief to present that information to the selectmen knowingly 
um, and not have it just slide by. Right. Um, I would agree. That's and that's the reason for the question. Okay. Anything else? Everyone wants anything else out there? I do. Oh, go. Our video audio install is scheduled for the second week of April. Hey! Yay. Yay. All right, that was one of my questions. Okay. <laughs> Good, that's the answer. Oh, is this where I ask my questions? Yeah, you, you just go. said that. You just, yeah, you're right. Okay. Who has the week of the 8th? What'd she say? Uh, the week of the 8th. Huh? The whole week? Week of April. The whole week? Nope, just Thursday and Friday. Is the 11th and 12th? Yes. Okay. April well, the audit starts on the 15th. I don't know. Oh, good. April 11th and 12th? Yes. Great. Okay. So Butch can take a vacation. Can we still call the MWNF? Is there a fully fleshed, fully fleshed out plan? Fully fleshed out. Uh, well, you, I knew the board encumbered the money some time ago. I wasn't aware that it had gone out to bid or they found a vendor. Well, we have, the, we have the, the bid that you obtained, and then we get another bid from another vendor in the state, which was lower. Um, and it's basically for mics wired into the ceiling speakers and a camera system. Well, new speakers, because those are dummies. Well, yeah. Wired into the holes. The holes. Because <laughs> <laughs> we got beautiful... I, I didn't mean to be premature. I just didn't know if the town had, if they're going to throw it up on the town's website, if they're going to do a Vimeo, how they're, or if we're just going to record it and we haven't done it. My like would be to do a Vimeo. Vimeo has now added live streaming to their account so that we could live stream as well as save it to Vimeo's site, which is what most towns around us do. And obviously we'd have to have some type of archiving here as well. But Karen's working on that with what the requirements are for the state level. Oh, um, these are just things I want to know. Um, Karen, has the right to know law book come in yet? Yes, it has. Oh, okay. Um, when we did Wayne's appointment slip, did it go to 2000 and 19 or 2020? I believe it went to 2020. I think it was going to 2020. I think John needs to be reappointed this year. John. Um, the Tell us. treasurer. Oh. No. Um, I'm pretty sure we're talking about it. Doesn't say. Doesn't say. Doesn't have it. It should have the dates in there. I'm pretty sure his appointment slip is, runs out this year. So 2019, so we need to be appointed? Yes. Not until April, I think. April? Okay. Oh, okay. So just, and those employment contracts that we got, they were going to go to town council. Were yes. They, were they approved? Um, we're still working through some of the language and a couple of positions. Oh, okay. So um, and did, did we ever sell the mowers? Not yet. They've been posted on Craigslist, and all the responses have been forwarding to Wayne Robinson to reply. Okay. And the issue there seems to be that we don't have a good estimated number of hours that the mowers have been operating. Oh, okay. And then, were we supposed to make a building committee for any new buildings? We haven't done that yet. We're not a new committee yet. We're not a new building. We're going to wait till the... Wait till we... Yeah. Once we have a building... Oh, all right. Just, we, I was reading my minutes, and these are things that we never follow up on, and I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know we made an agreement that we... Seven people. ...are going to do a building, then we would have... Yeah, then, then we, that's when they'll do the committee. Yeah, like right okay. now we have the exploration for the police building. Okay. But I don't think we have any plans for... The highway is the only one that I know. I thought the, high, the highway mm -hmm. should. That's the highway why it was brought up. We haven't even... Okay. Right. We're waiting for the new board to come in before we do Okay, I'm done. I have one okay. uh, clarification from what we talked about last Perfect. week about subcommittees. <coughs> oh, yeah. So if two of us meet or talk or get together. Is it the town hall? That's in here. Yeah. In here. So, yeah, for yeah, example, yeah. if I'm here <laughs> as a fellow selectman, hours are posted and Phyllis comes in or Dave comes in. Well, Phyllis and Dave both come in, then but it's that's a different issue. But if Dave comes in and talks to me, that's not a subcommittee. Or if Phyllis comes in and talks to me, that's not a subcommittee. Not a subcommittee. If two of us are together talking, unless 
you know, unless the board decides to make some subcommittee out of that. Um, for if example, you're holding if the board decided that they wanted that to be a complaint session with two or more board members, that would be considered a committee. But I don't think we have done that. I don't think we yeah, my understanding was like if like we talked about doing the meeting with the budget, budget committee for policies and stuff like that. That's, that's, that's definitely, definitely that's we have to have a posted meeting. Correct. That has because there's two people, have, two selectmen meeting together at the no, same the time. No, the budget committee has to have the minutes. Not yeah, the they have the, the, the budget, budget committee, committee, which is so the sponsoring that they have to post it. They have to take, take notes. The and the and right, but the selectmen would appoint two representatives. Two representatives. To that committee. And but if I have two selectmen, we have posted. That would be hours, on, right? if they're both going to participate in the it would be on a named the selectmen, committee. Then with the intent for them to both be here at the same time, that would be considered. So if they're both working, or if they're both here for the open <coughs> hours, selecting hours, correct? Then it's considered so subcommittee. Yeah. No, then I we call New not, Hampshire. Not, not, not my, for example, not my teleselectman session. That's not a subcommittee. A subcommittee. You have and to if one of the other selectmen on the board comes in while I'm holding those hours. That's not a subcommittee. That would not be considered. Is that <coughs> a, oh, that's that's not a subcommittee. Do no. you want her to get a legal opinion? I got a legal we opinion. Got opinion. Okay. Do you I want her to get a legal opinion? Sure. To ask Walter to make sure, because I just want to make sure we're not in violation, which is one of the things we. Yeah, talk that's about. fine. You can do that. We have a five-member board, so if you have three members in, then that's that's that's. But we don't. If two no, people, two. if I come in and say hello, it's not. I just want to make sure we have a. Because I think we talked about that because of the budget committee. Yeah, I, think I was that's told we have to have a meeting posted for 24 hours because there's two select board. But that's something that's different. That's a different. That's, that's a whole a, different that's animal. That's the budget committee, right? Right. So, well, which is what we had talked about last week. Right. Right. Wow. Yeah. Right. Uh, just to dispel some rumors. Uh, well, the rumors. Um, actually, uh, Captain Roy has notified the chief that he is retiring. That he is um, his last day of work is 3:28. And um, also that uh, Jared's background check is going through in Newington. Okay. And he's in the process of leaving also. But so if I don't have him in writing, I can't. I, I understand that, but your chief knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. And with that thing we talked about last week of shortage of officers in town mm -hmm. is coming to light. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And I, I actually don't like talking about it on camera because mm -hmm. I feel like we're leaving our town open to criminals if anybody's watching this on YouTube. So, as far as I know, we still have coverage. Um, I'm just that would be something we would have to, to look at, you know. So, so Warren, if I could address that, I have brought that issue up with the chief, as has the rest of the board. We've discussed it with her. I specifically asked her to make sure that we have coverage. She has contingency plans in place, so I also don't feel comfortable discussing them. Right, but. I specifically pointed out to her that we're in the process of losing a lot of coverage now, and we can't continue. My approach was that we can't continue to um, have overtime. There has to be another methodology for making sure that we have coverage in town. She's assured me that she has contingency plans for that. So as long as she's aware of it, I'm comfortable with it. Yes, One thing I didn't hear was police department overtime. Did you guys have that number this week? Maybe I missed we it. We didn't have that number this week. Uh, the chief is she's out. She's, out. Oh, she's, she's nice. on vacation right now, so we didn't get that sent up to us from David or anybody else. So I don't have it. Why, why do you have to spend money on a lawyer? Yeah, Steve, Steve. Steve Buckley. Yeah, Steve Buckley. Say who you talking to? Margaret Burns, is who she talks to? Thank you, Pam. Margaret Burns, is who she talks to? No, I talked to. Just no, that's who she talks to. Oh, right. that's there, well, I, staff attorney, Denny. Another staff attorney, that's fine. So you'll give him a call and get us a pin. So call legal counsel and get a pin. That's right. Anything else? I to see this, but Butch. I, the, the issue of the subcommittees is, is news to me, so can the chairman explain what statute you're talking about or why that came up? It came up because we are creating a new committee for policies and 
procedures? Procedures. Yes. Policies and procedures that the budget committee had specifically asked for. And, it's a totally different and we were trying to figure out, like, one of the things that came up is we were told we have to post 24 hours in advance for having a subcommittee, even though there's two selectmen that are going to be there having a discussion about something that we had to post a public uh, uh, is, is public it, meeting 24 hours in advance. Is it a committee of the budget committee or is it a selectman? So it's going to be two people about. from the budget committee, two selectmen will be part of it. There'll be somebody from the public, yep. right? Yep. It was and initiated by the budget committee. They asked us to participate. It seemed like a pretty good idea to us to review and establish where necessary policies and procedures that may or may not exist. Um, and I didn't think we needed to, it's kind of like, to me, it's like a meeting of the minds, right? Like we're all kind of talking about it before we bring it to a board. Um, but just, yeah. just to be clear, it's a subcommittee of the budget committee that it wants yes. to ask a couple of the ones that started it. And then we agreed as a board that we would support it and we would put two members of the select board on that committee, of which Bill and myself have agreed to be part of that. Um, I thought we voted to do that after the election. I thought we already did that. And we voted to do that. No, we voted to do that while we was still ongoing. And yeah. We, we yeah. Voted to do that. And then we found out that we have to have a posted meeting 24 hours in advance, kind of like we do for this meeting. It has to be posted 24 hours in advance in order to qualify. And, and, somebody, um, and somebody has to take notes. Somebody has to take notes. We have to do all that. It's a public meeting, so it's a new committee. You have to public, you have to post it, you have to go through all that stuff. And I was surprised to find out that it's then considered uh, with the two selectmen, it has to be a, it's a posted public meeting because you have a subcommittee of the committee. Subcommittee of the budget committee. Of the budget committee, and then which two subcommittee of the selectmen, too. So you have two selectmen, two budget and that's, can you Can you clarify what, what is the source of your belief on that? Is it 91A or is there some? How do they? Um, to Margaret Burns, so she's a staff attorney at New Hampshire Municipal. New Hampshire Municipal? Um, I'd have to look. I think she looked at the posting requirements for 91A. I think it was 91A. So it's 91A. That's, that's that's 91A. So 91A is what I discussed with Steve this afternoon as well. And, and then so I knew, like, I know that Bill is in there in the selectman's office or in the, in the office every other every, every other Wednesday. Every other Wednesday. Yeah. And then I know, like, Phil comes in too sometimes and so one of the things we had discussed last week kind of afterwards and I was like I was surprised to find out about the subcommittee requirement to have it posted so I know it's posted that Bill's going to be in there and he puts it in the newsletter that we're going to be there but then do you, I need to have somebody present to take notes because I have two people in there is it a subcommittee and those are one of the things that we talked about last week so really hasn't <laughs> that was one of the things we talked about last week is I was surprised to find out that you need to have somebody taking notes and stuff if you have a subcommittee. Is that considered a subcommittee, which is one of the things that I brought up to them last week is I don't know if that's a subcommittee or does one person have to leave the office hours if somebody comes in because it's posted that they're having that meeting. We'll get clarification on that from I think the there's two comments. clear different there's two the, different animals. The BUDCON <laughs> has a purpose, right? and that's a meeting for policies, for policies and it has a purpose. <coughs> Bill's Meet of Selectmen is here just to field questions from right. the public, right. and they're not actually making policy. Right. Right. So it's not a subcommittee. They're not making policy. They right. just be like me running into you at Lindy's and yep. talking. Right. We don't, we don't need to grab... Well, Lisa off the counter and tell her she's that. But those are one notes. of the things that I had asked them last week. That we talked about last week. Is I said now I got to find out if two of us, if we have something posted here and I show up, is that a subcommittee? And so yeah. we kind of talked about that last week. You have week, to so. vote a subcommittee, okay? Yeah, you have, you have to, have to create. Vote. Which is one of the things that we talked about last week. Is I was kind of surprised. That yeah, we two were selectmen, and we were talking about we were last week. That. So this is basically our discussion afterwards. <laughs> where they took it and then they called up to the municipality to get clarification, which is great. But I was surprised to find out that I need to have a subcommittee. It's the subcommittee meeting of two of us were meeting and I was like. If you vote to, to yeah. form no. a subcommittee, then that's a different story. Right. So we'd have to have. By the way, Andy, I want to clarify, I would also take accolades if anybody were to come in and give accolades to the board. 
doesn't happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, I would take them. It's usually it's not. I'm going to run the Adam on last time. Uh, yeah, last question. So Bill alluded to that he had spoken with uh, Ellen regarding coverage. Was this prior to the rumored departure of two more full-time officers that she mentioned that, that she would make week? sure that the that town was, has a contingency it plan? Week, it was either last week or the week before I was concerned that my my initial concern was that we seem to be having overtime, mm -hmm. and I don't think we can sustain a long period of large overtime expenses. But I said to her, but the bigger issue for me is that I want to make sure that we have coverage in town. If we start to lose people en masse, do you have a plan for that? And she does. So that's that was the root of my conversation with her, is that I want to make sure that the town's covered. If we start Police officers come and go all the time. Um, I just want to make sure we have coverage in town. And, and I know that there's a long lead time for bringing new people on board unless they're already certified in New Hampshire. So people that we're offering jobs to or that we will offer jobs to in the future, you know, I, I mentioned this to her as well, we should probably be looking to try and recruit people who are already certified because that will shorten the time that we need to get them certified and up and running and on their own. Keep our fingers crossed. But there is another, there's, there's, there are a number of contingencies that she has discussed with us that are available, so. And unless we have something in writing from somebody, I, it's just a rumor until I get it in writing. And usually if they get it in writing down there, she brings it up here because personnel stuff. And if it's a retirement, then I would usually announce that. So you guys would, would take a look at the date of that letter that Captain Royce So submitted. it's always going to be dated? Yes. Okay. So. In the event that there was a delay in getting it up to you guys. Typically, there's not. Usually, it's pretty quick because she's going to bring it up to Karen. Is she on vacation? Yep. Your answer is yes, that we will take a look at what the delay was from the resignation to the day we were. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. <Aaron. laughs> Appreciate it. But I can assure you that typically it comes up. If there is a delay. Well, I'm just saying that as of tonight, everyone is saying we know. I'll tell you what. No I'll even read the date for you so you can be happy that you'll have the date. I'll Put it on Butch's camera. Right it'll be. It'll be on the WNN. White House no, but I just, that's why I'm asking. Is right. Everybody up here tonight is saying we have no knowledge of it. I have no so knowledge. So we can anticipate that there I have hasn't been a long period of time since it was submitted to Alan. I don't have any written submissions that somebody is retiring. I have no written resignations that have been brought before the board. That wasn't his question. <laughs> but he How wants to know. No, his question is, will we make note if there was a delay between the chief being Yes, and, and I said I would read the date. I've already said that. I'll read the date, but <laughs> we're also going to state we don't have anything, so it's rumors. Yeah, I don't like rumors. Don't like body. That's a good problem, rumors. No, I. Well, I mean, but and you understand, like now he wants to say. We just everybody on the board is saying, and everybody sitting at the table is saying, we have no knowledge. Officially, we no. have no knowledge. Just okay, that's correct. Rumors. Okay, it's rumors. And so, like right. an official letter, dated and signed, it's just a rumor, and I will not entertain any rumors. Is that clear? I like it. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, oh second. Wonderful. Oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> 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 That's all you got to say. <laughs>